Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Elijah's strength was gone, and he prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah's recent courage and faithfulness on Mount Carmel, where he stood alone with only God by his side against the 450 prophets of Baal, that event had made Elijah a target of persecution. The Queen of Israel, Jezebel, had vowed revenge and wanted Elijah dead, murdered. Elijah learned of this and ran for his life, his courage fading. After a long journey to a place out of her reach, a strengthless Elijah sat down under a broom bush in the wilderness. He didn't want to die, <clears throat> he didn't want to die a violent death at the hands of Jezebel, but he was ready for God to take him home to heaven. And so he prayed, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Perhaps those words are said with some feelings of guilt and shame for running away in fear. Perhaps he is suffering from physical, mental, emotion, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion, which then can easily lead us into worry and fear and doubt and despair and so much more. I am no better than my ancestors. That was a part of Elijah's prayer to God. Who do you think he was, or who do you suppose he was thinking of when he prayed that prayer? I am no better than my ancestors. Which of his ancestors is he comparing himself to and discovering that he's no better than? Is he thinking of ancestors who also were worried and despairing? and afraid. Well, maybe Elijah is thinking of his ancestors who witnessed the parting of the Red Sea, but then grumbled against God soon after because they feared that they would die of starvation in the wilderness. Maybe Elijah's thinking of his ancestor Abraham, who lied to and deceived both Pharaoh and Abimelech because he was afraid. He was afraid they would murder him and steal his wife, Sarah. Maybe Elijah's thinking of his ancestor, Adam, who ate fruit from the forbidden tree and then hid from God because he was afraid. God had said to Adam, when you eat from it, that tree, you will certainly die. Elijah had a long list of sinful ancestors to compare himself to and lament that he is no better than them. And in some ways, Elijah is right. He is no better than his ancestors in that he is a sinner from birth, sinful from the time his mother conceived him. In this broken world, we are subject to physical, mental, emotional, spiritual exhaustion, which they can lead us into worry and fear and doubt and despair and so much more. Well, mercifully, God inclined his ear to Elijah and heard his prayer. And God did for Elijah what he does for all his redeemed. He answered Elijah's prayer in his own time and in his own way, because that's the way a wise, all-knowing God works. God answered Elijah's prayer, not by taking the prophet's life as requested in that prayer, but by doing this. He let Elijah sleep, then twice God sent his angel with food and water. With his strength now renewed by this bread from heaven, Elijah traveled to Horeb, the mountain of God, for more times of refresh refreshment and encouragement in God's presence. Now, like Elijah, we too are in many ways really no better than our ancestors. We also are sinners from birth, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. In this broken world, we are subject to physical, mental, emotional, spiritual exhaustion, which then can lead us, which then can lead us into worry and fear and doubt and despair and so much more. According to our epistle reading, 
We are to be imitators of God. Be like God in true righteousness and holiness, it says in Ephesians. That's the life that God has called you to. Be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That's the life God has called you to, and a life like that makes you a blessing to everyone around you. But all too often, we instead imitate our sinful ancestors who have gone before us. But the good news is that unlike us, Jesus is better than his ancestors. His whole life, he imitated his heavenly Father in true righteousness and holiness. Jesus was descended from Adam, but he succeeded where his ancestor Adam failed, in that Jesus remained sinless and said no to every temptation. Jesus was descended from Abraham, but he succeeded where his ancestor Abraham failed, in that uh, Jesus always spoke, not lies and deceit, but he always spoke the truth in love. And Jesus had ancestors in that group of grumblers in the wilderness, since he is of the tribe of Judah. But Jesus is no grumbler. Instead, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, here to conquer sin, death, and the power of the devil. In today's gospel reading, Jesus said, I have come down from heaven to do the will of him who sent me. That sounds like somebody who's ready to imitate his heavenly father in true righteousness and holiness. Jesus also said, My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. And Jesus knows that in order to make that happen, he must go to the cross and grave in our place as our substitute. On his way to Calvary, I expect Jesus experienced physical, mental, emotional, spiritual exhaustion. He felt anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane, his sweat like drops of blood falling to the ground. He was deeply distressed and troubled, his soul overwhelmed with sorrow. Yet he did not despair or lose heart. He willingly offered up his sinless life to pay for the sins of the world a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus offered up his life for Elijah, for Queen Jezebel, for the grumblers in the wilderness, for Abraham and Sarah and Pharaoh and Abimelech, for Adam and for all of us and all the times that we've imitated our ancestors in their wickedness. All that sin is covered by the blood of Jesus and his sinless sacrifice. On Easter, a crucified Jesus rose from death, freed forever from death, his soul no longer in sorrow or distress or anguish. The resurrected Jesus is like a healthy, life-sustaining bread to his church. He feeds and nourishes and sustains you on your journey to heaven. He forgives you and makes each day a fresh new start. He gives us his word, the Bible. He gives us the gifts of baptism, confession and absolution, holy communion, and his Holy Spirit. Through these things, he nourishes and teaches us how to imitate him in true righteousness and holiness. And because of Good Friday and Easter, because of the cross and the empty tomb, we will also imitate Jesus in dying and rising from the dead. Like the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, your grave will one day be empty and no longer needed. And the future that God has planned for you is life forever in heaven, body and soul nourished and redeemed eternally by Jesus, the bread of life. In his name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting, amen.